everyone, welcome back to KDX Bricks Analytics, where I watch all the other Lego investing and reselling videos so that you don't have to. And while watching those videos, I collect a bunch of data and then I aggregate it on this table so that you can get a quick snapshot of what the entire YouTube Lego investing and reselling community is thinking and talking about. And as always, at the end, I will give you my top three from this long list of sets that we are about to talk about. Every time a presenter discusses a set, I record it as a mention, and for each mention, I give it an enthusiasm score of zero, one, two, or three. A three is the highest score where the presenter thinks it's going to be a home run investment, and a zero means the presenter is skipping it for investing. We are at the halfway mark of 2024, so we are gonna do a cumulative table six month roundup. Since the beginning of this year, I've watched 245 videos across 17 channels with over 2,200 Lego set mentions. The top spot on our table with 44 mentions and an enthusiasm score of 2.7 is this Princess Leia Boosh helmet. This set has been top or near the top of the table really since the beginning of the year. I'm a big fan because it's a helmet and most of the Star Wars helmets have done very well. And I'm also a big fan because it is a Target exclusive, last year's Target exclusive Dark Trooper helmet that isn't the most popular helmet, is doing really well only six months into retirement. This one will have less than a two year shelf life. Here on the table, the R and parentheses in front of this set number means that it is expected to retire at the end of this year, according to brick fanatics and then a retailer in parentheses at the end means it is an exclusive to that retailer so again target exclusive for the princess leia helmet and second on the table no surprise at all is another helmet this time it's the commander cody 33 mentions e score of 2.6 also expected to retire at the end of this year with less than the two year shelf life i also like this one a lot but not as much as princess leia bush because this one is not a target exclusive you can get this one at most retailers talking about target though they just recently put it on sale for 38 dollars the original Original recommended retail price was $70 and it is still $70 at lego.com and in Lego stores. But Target recently moved their standard retail price for this set to $56. And then very recently, they put it on 30% off from that new $56 price, bringing it down to $38. That was very exciting. I definitely picked some up at that price. I generally agree with the 33 mentions and the E score of 2.6. My only hesitation that I'm really not worried about, it's not slowing me down, but it could run the similar course as the Red 5 helmet from last year that had like five months of zombie stock on Amazon and maybe one or two other places. That set just went out of stock on Amazon. And so now finally the Red 5 helmet can grow in price, but it's already up to about $100 on Amazon. I know Amazon prices are higher than eBay and Facebook Marketplace and not everybody sells on Amazon, but you know, it just gives us a gauge. This Cody helmet definitely could have some zombie stock, but again, at the $38 or if it goes to $42 or $48 on Black Friday, I'm willing to take that risk and I want to pick up 20 or 30 of these. And third on our list is the Moss Isley Cantina with a 4.5 on brick set. It came out in 2020, so a really long shelf life, but 32 mentions, only an enthusiasm score of 2.3. That's not low, but it's low for being the third set on this table. The reason it's low is because of the $400 price point. A number of great investors out there just do not invest in sets that are over $300, and so they'll just pass on this one. So far, I'm passing on this one for that very reason, even though I do have my one uh, behind me that I bought day one purchase back years ago. I loved building it. I do think it'll go up in value, but it could be a little longer hold time and it's a lot to put into just one set. Now we have five sets that we'll go through very quickly and that is because they are no longer retiring at the end of this year. We all got this, I would say somewhat bad news, but that's part of the game and we can pivot and adjust and keep on going. But we got this somewhat bad news a couple of months ago. We're still getting some mentions on them because people are talking about the fact that they're no longer retiring, but they're also talking about how they think generally they'll still be good investments at the end of 2025. But the E scores are going to drop a little bit because we have to wait the extra year. Those sets are the Coruscant Guard Gunship, the Ghost and Phantom 2, the TIE Bomber, this awesome Executor Superstar Destroyer MIDI scale that is a Walmart exclusive. This is the one that I'm most disappointed is not retiring yet since we have the three new MIDI scale ships that just came out. And I really want to see how this one performed in year one. And then lastly, the Darth Vader helmet. This one doesn't really bother anyone. And actually, Lego did us a little favor with this helmet staying on the shelves. It'll actually keep the buzz going for the helmet line in general, and it will help the Boosh and the Commander Cody helmet. If this one was also retiring at the end of this year, then we'd have three retiring at the end of 2024 and only the Mandalorian and Rex retiring at the end of 2025. Now that we're going to have three retiring at the end of 2025, I think that definitely helps the buzz and therefore the resellability of these two helmets. Now on to the Tusken Raider. You guys know that I love the Brickhead sets, two-year shelf life, just like Ahsoka, 21 mentions, e-score of 2.5. I have a Lego store near my drive home from work 
work, so I'm picking up as many of these as I can, but I'm always waiting for a GWP or double insider points, or heck, maybe it'll even go on sale by a couple of bucks at the end of the year. Boba Fett's micro fighter. This is an awesome little micro fighter. The minifigure is amazing. The build is really good for the scale. The fact that the minifigure can be fully enclosed in the build it makes this a much better micro fighter than the average. 21 mentions is great, only an enthusiasm score of 2.1. I actually agree with that. Lego is making tons and tons and tons of these and other micro fighters, so I think there's just going to be so much supply, and I don't know if the demand is going to be able to catch up. It's a $10 set. We've seen it for six or seven. I've already got maybe 20 or so of these that I got at the $6 price. If it went down to four and a half or five, I might pick up some more, but otherwise I'm going to be sitting on the 20 and working with those. 75345, the 501st Clone Troopers Battle Pack, another one that got pushed back a year on retirement, but 20 mentions, E score of 2.1. The enthusiasm score on the battle packs is going down a little bit. I don't know if that's because everybody is just used to them doing well, and so there's like, ah, eh, ho hum, they'll do standard, they're evergreens, and I'm looking for something that will be that diamond in the rough, or if the community is really thinking that there might be battle pack fatigue and these will start to taper off previous battle packs, even recent ones that had tons of supply like the other 501st are still doing well early in retirement. So I'm still pretty high on the battle packs, but obviously we're going to wait on this because I'm not buying anything that's not retiring in the same year. So this one will be a next year purchase. The Boba Fett mech. I have absolutely fallen in love with the mechs. 19 mentions, E score of 2.3. They're so ridiculous. They created so much negativity that there will be a lot of people staying away from these for investing under a one and a half year shelf life for all three of them that are retiring this year. Boba Fett, Stormtrooper, and Darth Vader. We'll talk about the other two in a minute. But the first wave of new Star Wars sub themes have a history of doing really well. And so I'm going to jump in on these. $16 is way too much. I think we'll be able to get them for $9 or $10. I'm watching closely. This Speed Champions Fast and Furious Skyline we were all excited about, but it's getting pushed a year, even though Brick set it says it's December 24. Brick Fanatics is saying it's going to retire in 2025, and I've heard other lists say 2025, so we don't know for sure. Maybe something to keep an eye on since Brick set says it's 2024, but at $25, the first new price, pretty expensive, so I'm hoping for $16 before I pick some up. As we know, the new new price is $27 for Speed Champions. 19 mentions, E score of 2.2. And now another great Brickheads, Lord of the Rings, Gandalf the Grey, and Balrog. This is such an awesome set, such an awesome build. 18 mentions, E score of 2.8. Obviously a Lego exclusive. Most, if not all, of the Brickheads are Lego exclusive. Past niche Brickheads are doing really well, like the three Minecrafts that retired at the end of last year. There are four Lord of the Rings Brickheads retiring at the end of this year. I think they're all going to follow the same suit. Those Minecraft Brickheads have almost doubled. Nothing more I can say about it other than I'm excited. El Dorado Fortis 10320 from the Icons line. Beautiful looking set. It's a 4.4 on brick set. 18 mentions, E score of 2.4. It was just on sale at Target for $150. I only picked up one more at that price. I'm hoping for a little better or maybe that price with some promos on top of it. But $215 is the retail price for 2,500 pieces. That is fantastic. We don't get many pirate sets these days. It just seems like this one is going to do well in the secondary market, even though there doesn't seem to be tons of demand for it and there isn't a ton of buzz around it. Yeah, 18 mentions E score 2.4 is awesome. But outside of that, I think there's still some questions about what the demand is going to be on the secondary market. I'm still excited about it. And now to the main clone trooper battle pack we're talking about this year. It's the 332nd Ahsoka's clone troopers. This one is still retiring at the end of this year. I'm glad this is the one that is staying on the retirement list because it has the shortest shelf life under a year and a half. These clone troopers are pretty good. Even the swamp speeder build is decent. 18 mentions, enthusiasm score of 2.2. I'm waiting for 12 to $14 and then I'm going to pick up a bunch. I'm not going to talk about every set on this list, so I'm skipping over Starry Night, even though you guys know I love it, but we have no idea when it's retiring. It's a pretty long shelf life already, but 17 mentions, E score of 2.6. Now on to another Brickheads, and same story with the Sonic Brickheads as with the Lord of the Rings Brickheads. They remind me of last year's Minecraft. I think Lord of the Rings will do a little better than Sonic, but these are great little sets, especially this Tails set. A lot of times the main character is not the best performing. It's going to be a secondary character. I think this Tails is adorable. Less than a year and a half shelf life is solid. 17 mentions, really good E score of 2.5. And then this Obi-Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader Brickhead, 17 mentions E score of 2.4. Not my favorite two pack, longer shelf life since it came out in the middle of 2022. Seems kind of bland, but they're really important Star Wars characters. The Lego investing community is a lot more excited about these than I am, but I'm still going to pick some up. The second Lord of the Rings 
Kings Brickheads to talk about, Frodo and Gollum. This one is only $15 because the hairless rodent Gollum is on the left here. Again, that is Gollum on the left. I'm saying that for myself. I figure if I say it seven times quick, it will finally stick. Even though I have seen all the Lord of the Rings movies and have read some of the books, I was having a brain fart last time. But yeah, these are great. 17 mentions, E score of 2.3. 77015, Temple of the Golden Idol. This is such a cool set. Mine is sitting right there behind my monitor. A 4.7 on brick set. That's really good for brick set. $150, 1,500 pieces. 21 months shelf life is fantastic. Tons of great action features. The minifigures are super cool. I love the dioramas in general. As you know, this is another great diorama. I don't like that it's curved so much because it doesn't fit well if you want to put other dioramas side by side. I don't mean mashed right up, but still, you know, you show your Indiana Jones diorama, your Jurassic Park diorama, and then some Star Wars dioramas. But outside of that, this set is fantastic. 17 mentions, E score of 2.2. And if I recall, Target has dropped their standard price to like 120 ish, maybe even a little less than that. I'm hoping for 90 to 100 dollars to pick a few up for investing. Speed Champions Lamborghini Countach, 16 mentions, E score of 2.7. Absolutely love it. Still at the original $20 price point. I'm not worried about the long two and a half year shelf life. Some people have posted they found it for $14.50 in some Walmarts and even as low as $10 in some Walmarts. Don't forget to scan when you're Walmart. Somebody posted that it was $14.50, but then when they scanned it on their Walmart app, it showed $10 in that store. And so they picked a bunch up. Even though there's a lot of question marks about Speed Champions when it comes to buzz and demand and the fact that the prices are going up on the primary market. I still think Speed Champions are evergreen sets, at least for another year or two, but we got to watch them closely. But this one I'm really excited about because Lego just came out with the new, very large brick built icons Countach. Same color, very similar. This daddy car will keep encouraging and reminding everybody to pick up the baby Speed Champions car. The third Lord of the Rings brickheads, Aragorn and Arwen. Awesome set, looks great. 16 mentions, E score of 2.6. The second Sonic brickheads. Man, Lego's getting really good at making these brickheads look awesome. 16 mentions, E score of 2.4. I'm picking up as many of these great licensed brickheads as I can on my way home from work. Again, only the ones that are retiring at the end of this year. I do not buy any set that are not retiring in the same year. Oh, and don't forget, my videos are for entertainment purposes only. I do not provide financial advice. You got to get that from somebody else. Now on to something a little different, a Batman set. This Batman versus the Joker Batwing. $38 for 357 pieces. Less than a year and a half shelf life is very good. 16 mentions, but only 1.9 enthusiasm score. The general tone on this set in the investing community is either A, completely avoid it because the minifigures aren't special and superhero sets are kind of overdone. And even though Batman is going to do better than Marvel on average, all the superhero sets are really starting to dissipate in secondary market potential and demand. And then there's some folks in the investing community that are saying, hey, this Batwing is really unique, kind of special. It's great that it's small, comes with a couple of minifigures, but you would have to get it on a really, really good discount. I'm leaning towards passing on it unless I see it for $20. Hey, maybe I'll be missing out on a great opportunity, but I think there are other sets that I'd rather put my investments in that I am more confident will do better on the secondary market. The second mech, this time the Stormtrooper, looks super cool. You can army build with this. Again, I know that none of these actually exist in the Star Wars universe, but I can definitely see a lot of people who army build with stormtroopers and clones and other minifigures saying, hey, let's get some cavalry units in there and army build with these stormtrooper mechs. 15 mentions, E score of 2.1. I still think Boba Fett's mech is going to perform better, but this one is super cool. And now on to one of my favorite sets, the six pack Phantom Menace Brickheads. Came out in May of 24, retiring at the end of this this year. That is an eight month shelf life. Hey, maybe it won't retire, but last year's Battle of Endor Heroes did basically the same thing and it did retire. We'll come back to this set in a second, but this one is super cool. No rating yet on brick set, but 14 mentions E score of 2.8, only 0.2 short of a top 3.0 enthusiasm score. All of these brickhead characters look fantastic. I know some look better than others and some are more of a standout, but I like all of them. They are true to the characters. Other than I wish Darth Maul just looked a little more menacing and it had a few more spikes on him. I'm not buying it at the $54 retail price, but if we look at last year's $40 up to $44 on Bricksaw already, but this one was 40% off and there was a little bit of zombie stock at lego.com for a couple of months. And so at the, I think it was $24 price point, now at $44 and of course a little higher on Amazon if you're an Amazon seller, six months into retirement and could only be four months for people who are picking these up in January and February. That's already a great ROI. And 
And so I'm hoping for the same deals and opportunities on this one. Captain Rex helmet not retiring the end of this year, but super popular. So one to look at next year. And then next up is the Speed Champion set. This one got extended a year, so it's going to have a long shelf life like the previous one that we looked at. But 14 mentions, e score of 2.4. Same story, really good discount. I'm picking it up. And I think Speed Champions are becoming a little longer hold time. But this is a beautiful Ferrari. Nice classic car. A lot of reasons to be excited about it. And then with 14 mentions and an e score of 2.2 is the small John Deere Technic tractor. I pulled up all three of the John Deere sets. These are the only three John Deere sets Lego has ever produced. The one on our table is this one here. It looks pretty good. A little bland for me in the trailer area, but the tractor is awesome. It's been on sale a lot. I think it has good potential. And then we've got the Forge Harvester that is not retiring at the end of this year, but a good one to add to the collection. But the one that I like is this very large $200 skitter. Lots of cool pneumatic action features. And I think the build is fantastic. The large semi pneumatic tires. And of course, the classic green John Deere color with the yellow accent is awesome. I got three already on a good discount. I'm actually going to build one of them and then the other two I'll hold on to. This Creator 3 in 1 Medieval Castle 31120, 14 mentions, e score of two. I think that e score should be a little bit higher. I think the new standard price is $80 at Target. Originally, $100 for over 1,400 pieces does come with a few castle related minifigures which is a nice bonus for a creator three-in-one set i have not picked up any yet but when it gets down to 60 maybe even close to 70 dollars i think it'll get there a brief time if it doesn't then i'll miss out but if it does i'm definitely picking some up i'm hearing a lot of rumors and seeing posts of people buying three or four of these because there's tons of great rebrickable mocks that you can build with multiple copies of this and on top of it the b model and c model are decent and they don't use a ton of pieces so you can use the remaining pieces to keep adding to your castle scene and layout that was the c model and then here's the b model knuckles and shadow sonic brickheads two pack 13 mentions e score of 2.6 i feel the same about this as the others and now on to an interesting set this ideas a frame cabin 13 mentions e score of 2.5 some people are absolutely avoiding this set and then others are really excited about it i lean pretty far towards the really excited about it but i want an excellent discount on it i know i'm a broken record saying that lego investing you gotta get really good discounts but this is such a beautiful set it goes really well with the tree house that is also an idea set that has been out for i think five years now it is expected to retire at the end of this year but it has fallen off the retirement list a few times in the past but that sets demand is what's driving lego to keep it going and not actually retire it. I think this set has a lot of similarities. Those two go really well together. So I actually think this one is a little bit of a sleeper and will surprise some folks on the secondary market. And just the build here is great, especially these Thor's hammers for the stone foundation. I wanna go visit a cabin like that someday. The Mario 64 question mark block, 13 mentions, E score of 2.5. This one is retiring at the end of July, so just a few weeks away. $200 though. I know there's a lot of buzz and popularity around it. I am just nervous. Maybe I'm going to be missing out on a great opportunity, but I am going to be skipping it. It does have a 4.4 on brick set. I know that the mechanism and build is fantastic, but it's not that big. And I'm not sure if people are going to pay $350 for it. Space Shuttle Discovery from the NASA lineup, also $200, 13 mentions, E score of 2.2. I think that's a little low. I think the NASA sets have a strong history and are becoming evergreen sets. A 4.5 on brick set is awesome. Obviously, Obviously, the news and talk about everything space related is on a huge upswing right now. Tons of people are locked into all of SpaceX's Starship launches and test flights and all the stuff that NASA is doing right now. And of course, other nations are doing a bunch of things. Therefore, I think the buzz and demand for NASA sets is going to be strong for many years to come. They're educational. They're interesting. They are great display pieces. They're good for adults, good for kids, good for families. I'm definitely excited about it, but I think that the NASA sets are a longer hold time. So just something to watch out for there. The Icons Ghostbusters Ecto-1. 13 mentions e score of 1.8 i agree with that i'm not enthusiastic about it but there are some people out there that are saying this one is going to be awesome but i'm just not seeing it it's an ugly vehicle yeah the movies are awesome it was great in the movies but it's an ugly vehicle therefore it's just not something that i would want to look at and i don't think many people would want to look at on their shelves 40677 prisoner of azkaban figures i'm not too excited about this one the figures don't look great to me i don't like the build on most of them other than serious black actually looks awesome really looks like him 
$50, so that's standard price, but same as the Phantom Menace set. Very, very short eight month shelf life, so I can't dog on this one too much. I'm actually warming up to it a little bit, partly because the Professors of Hogwarts that had a longer shelf life but retired at the end of last year is getting some movement, and this one also you could get on 40% off. So I guess I'll keep an eye on it, maybe right at the end of the year. If there's still some available at 40% off, I will grab them. Otherwise, I am passing. The Speed Champions Lotus, same story as the others, but a little lower rating on brick set and not quite as much buzz 12 mentions e score of 2.2 and then here's the darth vader mech 12 mentions e score of 1.8 that makes sense a lot of people are kind of eh on having a mech for darth vader but again i keep warming up to these mechs and i think this one will outperform what people are thinking so i'm gonna make sure i get an equal quantity of all three mechs and i'm hoping to be able to bundle all three together and then send those out you know like on ebay or something again i'm gonna skip over a lot of the sets in this list as we get further down feel free to follow along but i want to talk about the ninjago city gardens 11 mentions e score of 2.6 just a beautiful set i might make an exception to my 300 dollars max rule and pick some of these up because it's a 4.6 350 dollars for 56 85 pieces the other two that came first in this sub theme are doing fantastic there's only going to be four total i think in this sub theme that's what it's looking like and odds are we'll be able to get a decent discount at some point just an awesome set tales of the space age this idea set is expected to retire at the end of this year 11 mentions e score of 1.9 50 bucks is too much but i did just pick up two at target for 30 percent off and then one more at target for 25 dollars 50 percent off i've been telling dg all along in our podcast that if i could get it for 30 percent or better off then i think this one will double in value and not very long so i'm excited about those pickups here's the teammate to the batwing that we talked about earlier this time it's the batmobile but it is still a batman versus the joker with similar or minifigures, $48. I feel exactly about this one as I did on the Batwing. Maybe I like this one a little better. Some people are avoiding it completely and other people are thinking that it's a sleeper. And for me, I will get it if the discount is like 50% off. 11 mentions, only an e-score of 1.7. The Speed Champions Mercedes 2-pack, already at a discounted $35. Some of the 2-packs are $45 and then obviously more recent ones are going up, but this is already a good price. Of course, the F1 car is a little small and less pieces and we've seen it 20 percent off from time to time 10 mentions e score of 2.2 the emperor's throne room diorama 10 mentions 1.8 you guys know i still love the dioramas we've had a lot of zombie stock on some of the dioramas that retired at the end of last year so they have definitely been slow to grow on the secondary market so clearly the dioramas are turning into a longer hold time i still think they're going to do well the problem with all of them is the crazy price points this one's 100 for 807 pieces but we were able to get last year's at 40 percent off or better if we can do the same with the two that are retiring this year then i will pick them up 10 mentions e score of 1.6 for the ugly spider tank i still don't get it some people recently have been really talking about this set there have been some fines at 30 or 40 percent off but even at that price i'm not that excited because the only thing of interest is the bo minifigure with the arm printing yes it is a fantastic minifigure going for 22 dollars and then the other two are going for about 10 so it's 32 dollars in minifigures total but after you subtract out fees and shipping and everything else to me you have to get this set at greater than 50 percent off because everything else is a throwaway the vehicle spider crab thing is very very ugly it wasn't a great scene in the show i definitely wasn't too thrilled with the scene and so i'm a pass unless it's like a 20 dollar set now a bunch of sets with nine mentions and the first one has a max enthusiasm score of 3.0 and that is this lord of the rings legolas and gimli brickheads that just came out in june of 24 and right now is expected to retire at the end of this year this one we got to watch closely because it could be extended but if it is not extended then this is awesome i am super excited about it escape from the lost tomb nine mentions e score of 2.3 pretty good set great price point to start out with 40 dollars for 600 pieces target did have these at 30 percent off recently but they went pretty quick i think i got one and same thing with the fighter plane chase that we'll talk about soon and those i couldn't find any of any discount on either of these above the 20 percent standard seems to be selling quickly 71374 the nintendo entertainment system nine mentions e-score of 2.0 some people are still really really excited
excited about this set. It is a hard pass for me. I know it is a 4.6 on brick set. I know that over 11,000 members already own it. So clearly the popularity is there. The demand is there. But are people going to pay $400 for this? That's where I'm concerned. And maybe even $450 to really make it a decent profit. I'm thinking it's unlikely, but heck, maybe it's another one that I miss out on. I just want to put my investment budget into other sets that I'm more confident in. The Star Wars E-Wing versus Shin Hadi's Starfighter from the first season of Ahsoka. Not a fantastic set, but the minifigures are really good. Valen Skull is awesome. I know he passed away recently, which is super sad. He is a great actor and great in that role. So good minifigure. Morgan Elsbeth is a good minifigure. Captain Porter is a decent minifigure. And then the Shin Hadi minifigure is really good really looks like the actress although the set and the builds aren't that popular we look on brick economy the minifigures are valued at $50 so it's almost 50% of the $110 retail price this is actually down a little bit which isn't surprising as a set is on the shelves longer and longer the value of the minifigures on the secondary market will trickle but this was closer to $60 not too long ago I think that's a decent sign for the set but I'm not going crazy without an awesome discount and then similarly but very different is this other Star Wars ship two pack that is retiring at the end of this year. And this is an absolute pass for me. Nine mentions, E score of 1.6. The only value in this set is the TIE Interceptor and a couple of the minifigures. And I don't see them pushing the value of the whole box above the retail price. Even Wally, eight mentions, E score of 2.6, only $15. Super unique, great movie. Many of the unique Disney brickheads that are tied to a very popular movie have done really well. So I am excited about this one. And then The Office, a really good set to talk about. Eight mentions, E-score of 2.1. It's a Walmart exclusive, and it got pulled forward on their retirement list. So it is now expected to retire at the end of 2024. So under a two and a half year shelf life, 4.4 on Brick says pretty good. Tons of minifigures, awesome set. One of my favorite all-time shows. Right now, it's flying under the radar. I think this one has a really good shot. I do expect it to climb up our table with more mentions and E-score throughout the rest of this year. Sanctum Sanctorum, 76218. I think it's flying under the radar. Yeah, $250 is expensive, but it's 2,700 pieces with nine pretty good minifigures. No modulars are retiring at the end of this year. This one is compatible with the modular line. Past modulars have done really well. I think this one could be a little bit of a sleeper, so I do like it. And then here's the fighter plane chase we were just talking about. Eight mentions, E score of two. I love it. Obviously, I'm not paying full retail because it's always on at least 20% off. And when it goes a little lower again, I'm going to hunt for some more since I didn't get any from Target recently. 4322 Two, seven, the villains icons. This is a Target exclusive, but I wanted to throw this one up here because I'm not getting sucked in because it's a Target exclusive. Only eight mentions with an enthusiasm score of 1.5. It's a weird set. I can see some appeal to it, but I wish there were more villains, only four minifigure villains. And then the rest of it, you know, it certainly stands out, but after looking at it for a little while, I don't know how popular or how excited people will be to look at an Apple, a clock, some books, and a VHS tape. So even though many Target exclusives do well i am passing on this one and then here's another target exclusive the exotic pink parrot seven mentions e score of 2.3 this one i am very excited about i have not seen it on sale yet from target the blue parrot is out we'll have a longer shelf life i think the blue parrot came out before this one and i don't think the blue parrot is expected to retire at the end of this year but this one has under a year and a half shelf life lego's producing a lot of bird sets recently so it seems like according to lego there's a pretty good market for these bird sets this is a beautiful set so i'm watching it closely for a discount and then I'm picking some up. The idea is typewriter, 21327, seven mentions, E score of 1.7. This set is awesome. 4.5 on brick set. That is fantastic. Tons of great sand green pieces, all of the printed pieces, the action features, the Technic build in the core there is pretty advanced. It's an absolute sleeper to me. I have it in my power rankings video. I am planning to pick some of these up. The other diorama retiring at the end of this year. This one has even lower scores, seven mentions, E score of 1.7. Same story on this one as the Emperor's Throne Room. Yavin 4. Rebel Base, also seven mentions with an E-score of 1.7. $170 for 1066 pieces is way too expensive. Yes, the 12 minifigures, seven of them are probably exclusive, is pretty good, but only a 3.6 on brick set. That is because mostly of the price. The build isn't great. Obviously, this tree is terrible. It's way too open, so there's a lot of issues with this set. I did pick up two at 103 just because I wanted to build one myself. Yes, I know I just ripped on it, but still... I love building and collecting the sets, and I do want the minifigures. The other one I figured I would pick it up because I was there again. It was 103 Walmart clearance a couple of months ago, but I'm not picking any more up at 103. I would want this at like 50% off or better. 
The idea Sonic Green Hill Zone, very ugly set to me. I've never liked it. This one has been dropping way off on my mentions and e-score table, mostly because it was supposed to retire at the end of this year and it got extended, but seven mentions e-score of 1.6. Some people were really, really excited about this set last year. I haven't heard much positive about it anymore, so I think most people are getting out of this one for investing. The Ferrari 812 Competitive Zone, this is an awesome set. Six mentions, e-score of 2.7. Some people were also finding this one at Walmart for around four. $14 recently. I couldn't find any, but I hope to. That's a good one. Short shelf life around a year and a half. And so I think this one has a pretty good chance. 10308, the holiday Main Street, six mentions, E score of two. I don't like it. I am passing, but there are some people swearing by it, and then most people are skipping it. Here's the treehouse we were talking about when we were talking about the A-frame cabin. Yeah, been out since 2019. Six mentions, E score of 1.8. Tons of people were investing in this one previously. It did get a price jump from 200 to 250. It keeps falling off the retirement list. It's really starting to sound like it is going to retire at the end of this year, but I would still be very, very nervous to pick some up. The only thing that I'm considering, which is is very, very unlikely for me, but other people are talking about a little bit, is that because this one has fallen off the retirement list twice now, many people had tons of them more than a couple of years ago. And so at some point they probably gave up and just liquidated so they could move on. So maybe there won't be a huge supply on the secondary market and odds are the demand will still be there for a long time. I'm passing over the Chevy Camaro, the Harry Potter brickheads, and the New York postcard. You can just read the numbers as we go. Those three are retiring at the end of this year. Next up is this Target exclusive, the Disney Duos, five mentions, e score of 1.6. I'm not getting it, only a 3.7 on brick set. It was 30% off recently at Target. I still was passing up on it. They're just kind of ugly. You know, a couple of them are okay, but to me, brick heads are much better, and I just don't see the value or buzz or demand around these. The large expensive R2D2 at $240 with a new $100 one coming out. This one is in trouble on the secondary market, and it's just too thick and too ugly. Star Lord's helmet, also five mentions, e score of 1.6, 4.6 on brick set. I think that is worth paying attention to. Also, it is a Target exclusive. I think that's worth considering. But for some reason, I just don't think it's going to do well. I know it's a mask, but this open top just doesn't quite work out. Lego's done other masks where it's not open like this. And so I think there's a lot of negativity towards it. Maybe it's going to fly completely under radar and there will be no supply on the secondary market and any demand will make it grow. So I'm going to watch it closely for a possible discount, but otherwise, I'm passing. The brick built Chewbacca, I've joked about this one a lot. I like it for personal collection, and I've said that under $100 I would invest in it. Keep in mind, the rumored C3PO is coming to fruition, and this is a really good looking set, in my opinion. $140, 1138 pieces, expensive, but it's got a lot of gold in there. I'm excited about this one. The face is actually pretty good, in my opinion. And then I want to show you that these three sets, when we add in the $100 R2D2, scale really well together. And also remember, all three of them come with a minifigure. R2-D2 comes with a cool exclusive anniversary minifigure. But having all three of these on my shelves for me is going to be awesome. And I think there's going to be some hardcore Star Wars fans that will want to do that. And therefore, there's a little bit of possible demand on the secondary market for this somewhat hideous Chewbacca. And then here's a quick picture showing how they scale pretty well together. Now with only four mentions, but an e-score of 2.8, I want to talk about the City of Lanterns. This is a Monkey Kid set. I think all of the Monkey Kid sets are Lego exclusive here in the United States. $160 for 2187 pieces and some teal roller coaster track and some red roller coaster cars and all the other great stuff going on in this set. It reminds me a little bit of the Ninjago City sets. I think they could go together pretty well if you want to make a larger ninja and monkey kid fantasy environment and scene. And there are previous and current other monkey kid scene and building and landscape type sets. The Heavenly Realms that retired the end of last Last year is doing really well in the secondary market. So this is one I've been talking very positively about for a long time, but there's not a lot of buzz around it. The Ideas Globe, four mentions, e-score of two. $230, very expensive, not the best build. But now that I've accepted that it's more of a Van Gogh or Mosaic than an accurate build, I kind of like it. And the stand and cradle is really awesome. That is a very, very classy look. I think I've been saying that there's some potential with this, but a pretty long hold time, partly because this world map surprised everybody when it 
retired and immediately had a secondary market bump. Another idea is the Jazz Quartet. This one I am super high on. I really think this is flying under the radar and it's going to surprise a lot of people. If we look at the Camel 3X chart, we can see it has not gone on sale by Amazon, but it has been out of stock from time to time. And if we look at the third party sales when it's out of stock, it's jumping up from the $100 price point to 130, 150, and even a little higher than 150. This Creator 3 in 1 Birdhouse, it is absolutely adorable. I'm not big into birds, but I would love to build this and have this in my own collection. I might make that happen. Four mentions, e score of two, but it is a Walmart exclusive. And some people have been finding some really good clearance on this one. Again, another one that I have not found clearance yet. You know, at 15 or 20 bucks, then I think that'd be pretty awesome. 80112, the Auspicious Dragon. These seasonal sets typically don't do well. This is an amazing set, but I don't think this one is going to do well. But I want to show it because I do think that this seasonal Chinese festival family reunion union celebration set could do pretty well because I think it could be modded or wedged into a city or modular building layout and having a Chinese restaurant and market look I think is a really cool addition to city layouts and if we look at the other images I want to show you the back here there's lots of really good detail and there's a lot of depth here and I don't think it'd be hard to close this up and it would still look pretty good if people want to do that so I think this one could fly under the radar a little bit and if we find it on the list here on the left, it is, did I scroll too far? I may have. Where'd that one go? Here we go. Family reunion celebration, only three mentions with an e-score of two. Brickhead's Joy, Sadness, and Anxiety from Inside Out 2. I've not seen those movies, but I've heard they're pretty good. So without knowing the source material, I think I still like these. I think they look pretty good. It's $20 because two of the three are the smaller Brickhead size. But the best news is that it's another one that's going to have less than a year shelf life. Two mentions, e-score of 2.5. I do expect this set to move up the table because it just came out in June. Another Speed Champions 2-pack. These McLarens are not getting a lot of buzz, so I would want them on a really good discount. Two mentions, e-score of two. And then this Dreams Nightmare Shark Ship 71469. Two mentions, e-score of 1.5. I have this in my top 10 power rankings video. It is such a cool looking set. Awesome design. You can build it a couple of different ways. 4.5 on brick set. All of the Dream sets have been on huge discount at Walmart, except this one. I think the most I've seen it is maybe 20% off. To me, that's a sign that this set is actually selling pretty well. In my opinion, it's a huge sleeper. And when it inevitably goes on a better than 20% discount, then I'm going to be picking some up. This four plus Batmobile Pursuit set. And I forget why I pulled this one up to highlight it since I'm not going through every set on this table. I think that was a mistake on my part because this set is an obvious pass. Hey, kids will love playing with it. And I totally respect and support that Lego is a toy first for kids and adults. So I have no issue with Lego making this set. And again, a four year old kid would love this set, but not one for investing. I want to show this Minecraft set, the Sword Outpost. One mention, e-score of two, so clearly not popular for investing. But the Minecraft sword that they've built in this mosaic design that looks pretty awesome in this set is a very, very iconic element of the Minecraft universe. And with the Minecraft movie coming out, I think in 2025, it's possible that some of these pretty decent Minecraft sets will fly under the radar. We'll be able to get them on a good discount. And then with the movie coming out, they could go up in pretty good value. And again, as far as I know, this is the only Minecraft set with a large brick built sword representation. And so this one could become very iconic. Something to consider and keep in mind, but I'm not picking any of these up yet. Captain America Shield, one mention with an E score of two. I totally disagree. Even at 60% off, I'm passing on it. Some people are buzzing that the Shield will do as well as Thor's Hammer that retired at the end of last year. Thor's Hammer was a Target exclusive, and it is a super clean, nice looking build with a minifig that's not that big a deal. But what's cool about this set is you can actually pick it up and simulate that you're holding Thor's hammer. Captain America's shield, there's no strap. My guess is that it will be slightly flimsy with all those gaps on the shield. And so I do not equate these two. I love this set, but I am skipping the other. And then we'll wrap up with a couple of more speed champion sets that got one mention E score of two. So these expensive speed champions are really flying under the radar. Investing in these all comes down to the best deal that we can get on them. But this Pagani Utopia is an awesome 
awesome vehicle. What a great design. I rarely like gray sports cars, but gray looks perfect for this one. And then the Porsche 963 is only okay for me, but at the right price, I definitely want to get one. And uh, I think you guys know this, but I get all the Speed Champions for personal collection. So I definitely get one of each that I end up building at some point. And now finishing up with my top three in third place is the El Dorado Fortress. I love the price point that it's a pirate set and a theme that we don't get many of. And I love the overall build. I'm hoping that the lower buzz on this is to our advantage because I really think the demand is going to be there and the lower buzz may just mean a little less supply. Some people are not too excited about this one, but I am very excited about it. In second place, super easy pick Legolas and Gimli. Lord of the Rings sets have a strong history on the secondary market and this one is going to have a super short shelf life. And then number one, no surprise, is the Princess Leia Bush. It is the number one set on our list and it is a Star Wars helmet that is exclusive to Target. I don't think I need to know anything else for me to be excited about it. All right. Thanks a lot for watching. That's a wrap. And I will see you in the next one where I'm going to do something a little fun. At least it will be fun to me. And I hope that you guys will enjoy it.